What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen and in this video I'm literally going to put a camera to my fish finder and I'm going to point out what I see and I'm going to talk about how I find fish using my fish finder. <laughs> So I'm on a lake that literally I've only been on for about four hours. I went, I came out here just a few days ago and kind of motored around and zigzagged and went and just kind of looked at the lake. I'm going to fish this lake hard uh, on Sunday against Dave Lefebvre, who's going to be fishing one of his lakes up in Pennsylvania. So it's going to be a fun little live deal, but we'll, that's not even part of this video, so I'm not worried about it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my camera right in front of my fish finder and I'm going to go around and I'm going to uh, basically point out what I see and point out kind of kind of show you guys how I use my fish finder to find fish no matter what lake I'm on um, this is kind of a different video and I and, and it's kind of a test video and what I need from you guys is I need some honest opinions down in the comments do you like it um, what can I do to, to, to make it better what would you like to see different um, and also, if you have any questions about what you see during the video, put them down there. Now, the, the one thing that, um, that I want to let you know is this is not going to be, uh, I'm not going to talk about like the basics of how a fish finder works. That's another video that I'm planning that's going to talk about um, ang you know, cone angles and, and, uh, and signal sizes and that stuff. I'll touch on it a little bit while I'm trying to explain what you're seeing. But other than that, um, that's going to be a totally different video. So stay tuned. Let me let me get the camera set up, put it on the fish finder, and I'm literally just going to walk or going to walk. <laughs> I'm going to motor around back and forth, and I'm going to show you what I see and show you what the fish finder is telling me. And let's go from there. All right. I hope there's not too much glare. I know there's a little bit right over here, but that's just the map. It's not really. It's it's in the process of making a map. Which is one thing I like about fish finders these days is they can. Literally, as you're going over top of them, they'll make a topo map for you. This lake is relatively flat. Um, deepest depth is right out in front of us, 20, 22, 23 feet, but the majority of the lake seems to be between 12 and 7 feet average, maybe a 7, 8 foot average, I don't know, but it's really shallow. Um, and it's about a 600 acre lake. But as I'm motoring around, I'm looking for certain things on, I'm looking for specific things on the map. I want to see what depth the majority of the bait fish are holding at. So as I go around, I kind of pay attention to a little bit what's going on. Right here we've got something like a road bed or maybe just a rise. I've got a drop right here to my right that I'm coming up on and you see just the tip of it right here. So I'm gonna make a 180. Now during this whole time, I want you guys to, to pay attention to my speed because speed determines the size of the image that you see or the size of the fish, it determines a lot of the detail that you see. Um, there's not an ideal speed, but I don't like to go super fast when trying to scan for bass because they go from being a nice little, you know, little good sized dot to being a little teeny tiny dot because you're going so fast. But that really looks interesting because it's deeper right out here. Okay, here I go. I'm coming back up on it. You'll see it on the down imaging here in just a second. Uh, it's just a hard spot. There it is. And there we go. It looks like an old road bed is what that looks like. And it's hard. And that's kind of what I look for. And the reason I know it's hard is because right here you see that it's brighter than, than down here. It's a hard spot. Now that could be one of two things. If it brightens up just on one side, then you're going. Then the, the, the lay of the land is going up. So you got shallower... Um, you'll have shallower bottom on, on one side and it'll be brighter and be darker over here. But because there's a, it's a bright spot, that tells me that's hard and it's probably a road bed. Now the reason why road beds are so significant is because they, um, they hold fish. It, it's a hard bottom, there's not a lot of silt. Uh, the fish hang around it, the crawfish hang around it, the bait fish hang around it, and the bass are gonna be there feeding on the, on the fish and so, I'm going to go back over it again and I'm going to mark it because I, I'm pre-fishing for this little one-on-one -on -one tournament. So I'm going to try to get over there and mark it. I'm going to go ahead and change to where I can adjust my side imaging. And now what I'll do is I'll zigzag all the way up that roadbed until it disappears. So I'm going to go and I'm going to mark over to my left 60 feet 
where it kind of tapers out. I'm just going to mark it with an X. And then I'm going to mark it right where I went over top of it, which is right under the boat right there. And then I'm going to mark it 60 feet over. You see it pop up on the map. And there's some more little hard spots. Not a lot of fish around them. But I'll go ahead and tell you that you're going to see the majority of the bait fish somewhere between 10 and 12 feet deep. This lake, the visibility is about a foot, maybe a foot and a half. They've had quite a bit of rain lately. See, those are fish right there. Right there. So what I do when I see fish like that, I'll go over on my side scan. And a side scan is so valuable for searching an area really fast because of this. But I just mark a fish emblem. Because those fish won't be there forever, that's one emblem that I use for when I just see fish. And then I can go back later, several, you know, days, months later, and I can delete everything that has that that symbol and all of those waypoints go away because they, they're only viable for that day or, or that week. So here I am, I'm going over again and look, it disappears. So this is the end of it right here where I just went over. So I'm gonna mark that. You can mark over the dead center or over here, it's still under the boat at a waypoint. I want that one. See, it kind of, it's a dip. Uh, oh, never mind. We got hard bottom that goes all the way over here, too. And I'm going to mark directly under the boat. And you see how bait fish kind of hang around them. So let's keep zigzagging. If that road bed was at 10 feet deep, and I'm gonna show you why, and I, I know the fish are at 10 feet deep here in just a second, but if I if that road bed were at 10 feet deep, it'd be covered with fish. Because it's 20 feet deep and it's lower than the fish want to be right now, they're not gonna be there. But it's something I'm gonna check every time I come by just to make sure, especially if I find the fish that are getting the fish are getting down that deep. But with this water clarity of only one foot, I don't see that happening. So let's go find some shallow stuff. Now because I'm moving, I was moving so fast, these balls of bait fish ended up being pretty straight and narrow. And that's because of the shape of the signal that's coming off the down imaging and the side imaging. Or, or you know, they're both different signals, but we'll get to that, like I said, in another video. But um, you'll notice that both of those bait balls and their major size, you know, they're good size bait balls for this lake, are all about 10 feet deep, between 12 and eight or nine feet deep. So if I keep seeing that, keep seeing that, it tells me that there's something about that depth that the fish like, whether it be a bass, whether it be a bluegill, whether it be anything else. See, here's a school of larger fish. Those might be bass up high. I don't know, but that's a brush pile. Um, but they're all up at about 10 feet. That may be carp, it may be just about any kind of fish. But uh, what I typically do, will do when, uh, when I start to see larger fish is I'll go to my um, regular sonar. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do, but um, <laughs> go to your regular sonar. I, I should have changed that to my regular sonar, but anyway, and I'm looking for three colors, blue on the outside, yellow, and red in the middle for this color palette. Other fish finders have different color palettes, but I'm always looking to see how big the fish are. The more red or the more color in the center, the bigger the fish is. So that's kind of what I'm looking for, and I'll show you that as I see it. So right now I'm pulling up into a little cove. It's actually a two, there's two coves, and if you guys know this lake, it's called Lafayette Lake in Georgia. It's got a little cove right there. It's got a larger one right here. So I'm pulling up in there just kind of give you any ideas of where of where I'm at. Set that up. Let's see what I can see. There's a little something on the bottom right there. I see two little shadows. Get up into that 10 foot range. It's just stuff laying on the bottom. This right here is um, 
looks like a little bit of bait fish or something. You see little bitty shadows. That's a stump. And if I slow way down, which I typically, I, I should, I like to go 1.3 miles an hour. And the reason I'm in my kayak is because I get a lot better image in this kayak than I do in my boat. There's less bubbles going over top of the transducer. My boat throws bubbles up under the transducer. Okay, so we're at 10 feet, you start to see fish. See those little dots on the bottom, especially on the down imaging? See all these little dots? I'm starting to see a good concentration of fish at 10 feet. And this is the way it was the other day too. I expected them to be a little shallower because we got some good cold rain, but there's a lot of fish just right here hanging close to the bottom. They're not big, but they're fish. It's life, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. A couple little things. There's not a lot that I can find in the bottom of this lake. Not a lot of drops, not a lot of anything else. I got a bug crawl up my leg. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's just, it's almost featureless, which makes it really tough to find fish. But if I can find fish here, I can find fish anywhere. I'm getting up into the eight foot range. You see a little bit of ball of bait fish right here, small one. Let me slow down just a hair. Now, the, the image from, a side, from the side imaging, that the signal that goes out is, is paper thin and it goes out side to side. And it goes directly 90 degrees from the transducer. And so anything I pass, I, I mean, it's literally right on the side of the boat. Distance is something I'll cover in another video, but you see a lot of little bitty bait fish over here. It start, it drops off right here. Evidently the creek channel or whatever ditch runs in here is, is, is over on this side, but you can see the suspended fish above that drop, you know, and there's something right there, a little stump or something. Um, I don't see any fish on it, but about 1.5 miles an hour and I'm going to start zigzagging because I'm about to run into the bank. Small fish, a lot of small fish, but you'll notice and what I think I'll see is once I get up super shallow up into five, you know, five and less, I'll see fewer of those small fish. I expect the bass between be, to be between eight and 12 feet deep just because of what I see there and that's where I'm going to focus on. I could be wrong. This rain and this muddy water could move them up super shallow, but that's something I'll find out with my rod and reel and not with a fish finder. So look at all this. This is super muddy water. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but uh, let me get my paddle. I'll stick it in the water and kind of show you guys what clarity is. That paddle disappears in about a foot and a half, so it's not as dirty as it looks, but it's still pretty dirty. So, and shallow water. Um, Typically, we'll keep the fish, or dirty water will keep the fish shallow. So I'm pushing up into the four foot range. You don't see hardly any fish. You see a little bit here and there. So what I'm about to do is I've got these trees right here laying in the water, and I'm gonna turn around and go the other direction. I'll tell you when I'm crossing in front of them. And I'm gonna look and see if there's any fish suspended up underneath them. Side imaging is so valuable when you're trying to find fish quickly. But I don't recommend getting it to start with, especially if you're on a budget, because it's not cheap and you want to get the largest screen that you can afford with side imaging, because the smaller screens you just don't see as much detail. Okay, we're about to pass one of these trees and you won't be able to see the tree very good. You see a little squiggly stuff right here, all that. Let me, uh, change my range a little bit. I don't like to change my range much on the on the side imaging because then it changes the size of the fish that you see and I'm just used to seeing you know I can tell on the side imaging how big a fish is if I just leave it in the one spot. So that's just rough rough bottom is all that is. Going under another tree. Nothing there. Doesn't mean there isn't anything there but I don't see anything on the fish finder. All right let's pull back out and look deeper. All right, so right here, this is the junction between those two coves. There's one, there's the long cove, and I just came out of the short one. So this should be a point sticking out. I don't know how far it sticks out, and that's what I'm about to find out, because points attract bass big time. So put that back in the holder. Okay. We're at 5.3 feet. And we are coming up, and I'm going straight across that point. I'm not going towards the land right now. up to about three feet. Now I know the bass 
or I know the majority of the fish are holding around 10 feet. So I'm gonna turn and watch right over here. Watch me turn right here. And I'm gonna zigzag back and forth out into the deeper water and find out where that 10 foot spot is. Where it's 10 foot deep. So that's five foot. There's a, there's some bait fish right there. See all that bait fish? Kind of hanging along that edge. That's good to see. It's a little shallower than 10 feet. Just gonna zigzag back and forth is what I'm doing. Right, coming back up on it again. And it is no longer a point. It's gone at about six feet or eight feet. So that's as far as it goes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember that. It's still a good spot for the best bass to pull up on. But it's not a point out that deep. All right, I'm not gonna grab my camera and lift it up, but I'm going into the back of, or going towards the back of the, the bigger pocket. And there's a creek that runs in back here. Um, there's some bait fish right here off to the side, 10 feet deep. But uh, there's a creek that runs in back here. With all the rain we had yesterday, I expect it to be muddy, but with a creek running in the back in the summertime, that is a source of, of oxygenated water. There's no grass in this lake, so I'm gonna look for oxygenated water. And the only way you're gonna find that is with current coming into the lake or wind creating current um, or depth. Depth will hold oxygen better too. In the summertime, when the water temperature gets up into the 80s, it starts to lose its ability to, to hold dissolved oxygen as the warmer it gets. So that's kind of the reason why in the summertime you're looking for that oxygenated water. And obviously on this one, it's around 10 feet. <laughs> All right, so look right here. Let me see if I can cover it up. There's a bunch of bait right out here and I, there's nothing on this side. So I'm gonna figure it out, figure out what that is. So I'll make a U-turn. See what's going on over here. One thing I don't like about Ray Marine is it takes forever for the map to update. It's, it updates once a second. And Lawrence and other ones update, I think, as much as a quarter of a you know, four times a second. Okay, so it just, it's just harder bottom. And it comes up and it rises just a little bit. I don't know if you can see this or not, but that's a little fish I was going too fast. See, the, the I got two speeds that I go when I'm searching. When I'm looking for cover and structure, um, I can go, you know, three, three and a half miles an hour. When I'm looking for fish, I slow way down to about one and a half to two miles an hour. That's probably a bass right there, or a larger fish. And it's hard. I'm turning too, so it also can skew that side or make that side longer. So you gotta really pay attention to what your boat's doing. But I think those are all bass. And they're at about eight feet deep, if I remember correctly what it was when I went across there. So, cool. I'm gonna mark those. go further back up into this pocket. All right, so what you see right here on this side, that's the bank. It, it, so it's dead black, it's like a straight line and the bank's just right off to my right. So it kind of helps me realize how far away something is if I see right here as I run along the bank and say, all right, that's what, 30 feet or 25, 40 feet, whatever it is to the bank. Still. This lake is just so flat. I'm in the mountains. Well, kind of, this is a big valley. It is so flat. Not a lot of drops, not a lot of creek channels. I'm gonna, zip, I'm gonna go straight across. I'm turning 90 degrees going towards the bank on the opposite side of the pocket. It looks like a little bit of bait, or not fish. That actually looks like a brush pile. Might be fish though. Not bass. The way I can tell that is bass typically are, are a lot more scattered out. If that were fish, it'd be like crappie or bluegill or something like that. 
All right, I'm not seeing enough life back in here. I'm gonna pull out, go back up, out, out to the main lake and go up a little bit and I'll turn the camera back on when I get out there. All right, I want you guys to see this. As I was going out of the pocket, come on, go backwards. All right, I went past a tree, a lay down, and I want you to see, I don't know if I can zoom or not. I'm gonna look and see if it'll let me zoom. I haven't done this in a long time <laughs> with this unit. Nope. All right, let's get that out of the way. I figured I, there's got to be a way I can zoom. But anyway, right here underneath, underneath that tree that I went past, you see these little white dots? I'll we'll zoom in. All those white dots are fish, and good-sized fish, because I wasn't going very fast, and I hate that the Ray Marine does that. Just let me watch the stuff. Let me leave it on there and look at it. But anyway, so they're just, they're, they're fish underneath there. I don't know if they're crappie or they're bass or whatever, and I, I would normally stop and fish. I'm going to keep running around the lake, but I'm going to come back here and fish for those fish. That's awesome. That's the tree I just went under, or went past. So I'm gonna come back there and see if I can't catch a fish later on. All right, so I'm coming out of those two pockets, coming out onto the main lake, and I'm just gonna kind of motor around and find out where the shallow and the deep water is. As of right now, it's pretty deep on this side of the lake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go across to the other side and see how, if it gets shallow. I'm trying to find the creek channel. I wanna find the deepest water in the area. So it's always kind of what I wanna look for first and then go from there. And the reason is, is because bass use deep water for security, for safety. Um, and so they wanna be as close to the deep water as they can, but still be in their, in their, uh, in their kitchen eating or in their dining room where the food is. So, all right, let's keep looking. All right, so I think that's the creek channel. And it looks like one, but it's awful straight. And it might be part of that ditch we saw earlier. I don't know. I wanna remember that. Let's see if it, it, it keeps going up as we go towards the other side of the lake. All right, so we're almost to the other side of the lake. I'll get the camera up and show you. So we're getting pretty close. And I zigzagged over this the other day when I was out because this is like a little point that doesn't really look like it's a point <laughs> from the shore. So as I pull up to it, getting shallower, I'm slow way down. It takes a minute for my GPS to catch up to tell you how fast I'm really going. That's a pretty steep drop for this lake. way up shallow but I don't see any fish on it look there's nothing on it maybe little bitty tiny fish that you probably can't see on the camera but turn go off of it again and see in a different spot and see what's going on here Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, we're out to 10 feet. Not a thing. And we are on the opposite side of the lake from the creek channel. So that may have something to do with it. All right, I'm gonna go into this little pocket to my right. This one right here. Whoa. Let's see if I can get to it right there. And there's some brush piles out in front of that dock I found the other day, so we're gonna, I'm gonna go show them to you. So, I want you guys to see something and see how little these brush piles look, but they're actually pretty good sized. All right. There's one right there. There's one right there. There's one right there. There's one right there. And the only reason I know they're brush piles is look at the crazy little shadow behind them. This one doesn't have a shadow, but it is. If those two are brush piles, these have got to be brush piles. And there's a little bit of fish around them. So, that's a log. See that log right there. So brush piles don't look like much. Here's another one right here. And the way you double check them is you go, you mark them and then you go straight over top of them and you see them on the, on the down imaging. And the reason I like down imaging is because down imaging will separate fish from the brush pile. So as you go over top of it, you'll be able to see it. I gotta do something real quick. I have gotta go to my map and zoom in so I can get perfectly lined up with that brush pile, which I did not. Yeah, let's go over the other ones. 
hard thing about these Ray Marines is because they don't update their map every, you know, four times a second, once a second. Really difficult to pinpoint exact locations and go over top of them. You see me zigzagging it's because of that. See the brush piles? That's what they are. Just look like that on the down imaging. And you see yeah, there might be a couple of fish underneath that one. A lot of little bait fish around that teeny tiny ones. So, all right, let's keep looking. That might be two fish way out there deep. There might be some more brush piles I haven't marked yet. All right, here's one that I really did a good job of, uh, of going over top of and creating a map. It's a point that sticks out. It's got a lot of stuff on it. I mean, look, that's probably a stump or a brush pile. That's a stump. Hard, hard bottom right here. See how it looks kind of gravelly? All that stuff right there. So let me stop. And I gotta go to my side scan. And then go over here and I'm just gonna mark these things. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna use the rock icon. I'm just gonna mark a couple spots. I'm gonna mark how deep it goes right there all right that'll help me out there's some more stuff over here but i'm going so slow you'll have a hard time getting the gps on it but i'm going to remember all that stuff i'm going to come back and fish this spot there's not a lot of fish around it though so let's keep looking all right so here's a good one right here oops crud <laughs> all right so here's a good one on the side of the imaging and i'll show you what it looks like on the down imaging as well but this is just a hard spot we just went over it doesn't rise it doesn't fall it's not a change in depth so it's it's just a, a hard area and if they were 15 feet deep that's where they would be it's right along this hard area there's a stump there's a stump there's a little bitty stump um, there's a stump out here and, uh, and so and then it just gets into soft bottom again as you can see there's a couple of now these right here these aren't bait fish close to the bottom these are bait fit or these are bait fish way out to the side and typically you won't see too if they're all the way that far out you won't see them on on this part and and usually well we'll get into that in another video but the, the fish you see here are usually suspended out here somewhere so like that one is probably suspended right out here but you see it on both sides so it's directly under the boat if you only see it on one side it's suspended somewhere out here and the shadow will be way back here Anyway, that's a whole nother video. All right, so I went up the lake a little bit. Only, only a few hundred yards. I'm starting to see a little bit more light. That's a good sized ball of bait fish and it's shallow. So I'll kind of keep that in mind. The water temperature is 81, which is a little, about eight degrees colder than it was the other day. Of course, we got cloudy skies too, which also help the basket shallow. All right, so I want to show you guys something that I found the other day. This is out in the middle of the lake. And I'm gonna show you what they look like. I'm gonna try to turn into them. So we can scan right past it. It's trees is what it is. And I wanna show you the reason. I'll show you what they look like. There should be fish in them, probably crappie, but we're going crappie, crappy, whatever you wanna say. But let's, uh, let's go through them, past them and see. I always mark the ends of laydowns and the ends of trees. So there's one. Not a lot of limbs on it. There's the other one. Lots of limbs on it. And that's what it looks like. Now. Let me show you what all it is. So that you see the log, and the log, and then the tree with a bunch of bunch of limbs. It's probably a Christmas tree from uh, from this Christmas. Somebody put down there in this same spot. Somebody probably puts this stuff in there the same spot every single year. There's a little bit of small fish in there, but typically what you would see if there were bigger fish would be like popcorn, like little white dots everywhere, and you'd see those in it. But you don't. You see a bunch of them out here scattered. But 
I don't think those are bass because there's not hard bottom, there's no cover, or there's no structure for them to hold on. There's no cover, and they're just kind of scattered. So it could be just about anything, but I don't think it's bass. All right, look, I, I turned around and came at it at a different angle. This is that one that was the furthest this way, that one single log. You see, there's a little dot right there, a little white dot right there that could be fish. Also could be a limb hanging off of it. So uh, a lot of times when you're looking for fish using the fish finder, it's more about what you don't see than what you do see. This lake is almost featureless out deep. There's not any drops, there's not any rock piles, there's not any, there's very little hard bottom. Um, plus we have muddy water or dirt or heavily stained water, foot, foot and a half visibility. That's gonna push the bass and the, and the fish a little bit shallower. The bait fish that we're seeing are, um, are down at 10 feet, but there's more seems to be in the eight, five to eight foot range and moved up a little bit shallower. So uh, a lot of things are pointing to the fact that I need to go move shallow and start looking. Now, fish finders are great five feet deep and deeper not so much shallow you can use the side scan you can you can scan this you know like we did under the underneath that tree uh, and that was another thing that 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 uh, lay down had a bunch of fish underneath it so it, it told me that the bass are going to be or the fish themselves are going to be shallower than i than i assumed so uh i'm gonna go fishing you know after after i've, I've realized the bass aren't you know five feet deep or deep or, you know five feet or deeper I grab a rod and I use that as my fish finder, so that's what I'm going to do. But I hope you you learned something from this video. Like I said, leave some comments, good constructive criticism down in the comments, um, and let me know what you think. Ask any questions. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. May take a day or two, but uh, I'll get to your questions. But uh, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, I, I want to keep doing these types of videos where I just show you guys the fish finder as I go to different lakes and show you different things that I know and that and and show you how I find fish using the fish finder. But I hope you enjoyed it. Well, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go out and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you.